hello. Um, I, I would like to tell you about some of the work that we're doing at the University of Pittsburgh to mo move us from what are called generation one and generation two pho photovoltaic materials, which are expensive and of moderate efficiency, to what are, have been termed generation three materials, wh which are both cheap and efficient. Uh, but first, I want to tell you a little bit about why that's, that's an, an important thing. Th this is a time-lapse image of planet Earth, uh, and it, sh it, it, it shows the lights on on various re regions of the world. The fir first world has the lights on, the third world less so. Uh, a lot of people in, in the developing world are moving to, to the first world, and more energy is go going to be getting consumed. Right now, the burn rate is about 15 to 16 terawatts. And, and by 2050, 40 or so years from now, it's predicted to, to double. So somehow we have to find another 15 t terawatts of energy or of power. But what's, what's the unit of terawatt mean? That, that's what this slide is meant to illustrate, where the different images show jumps of a thousand fold in pow power usage. And on, on the lowest end is the now canonical iPad, which runs at about a watt. And, and on the right is a nuclear power plant, which ge generates a gigawatt. Just to give you some idea of the scale, we would need 15 to 16,000 nuclear reactors to be powering the Earth t t today. If we got all of our energy from that, as Jerry told, told us earlier, so I won't, won't spend much time on this slide, 80% of our energy mix comes from fossil fuels. And that's, pr that's the, the same throughout the world, and that's predicted to continue in, in, into the future. Now, what's the problem with fo fossil fuels, or is there a problem with fossil fuels? There are four issues that have been raised in, in, the, in, in the discussion over fossil fuels. One is the idea of a fi finite supply. But we now appreciate, certainly from earlier talks today, that's really not a, not a pr pr problem be, because more fossil fuels are being discovered. Well, what about energy security? Certainly it's true that, that we import a lot of our oil, a lot of our liquid fuel from parts of the world that, that, that don't like us. But the fact of the matter is that we're the Saudi Arabia of coal. And we know how to turn coal into liquid fuel if we have to. Nazi Germany did it in the middle of a war. And they didn't lose the, 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 the war from the unavailability of oil. It, it was coupled with many other things. Health, health impacts. Tens of thousands of people die every year be, be, because of the way we, we, we use fossil fuels. That's something that society is already come to, to, to grips with and learned learn how to deal with. So none of those are game changers. The real game changer is global climate change. It's well known now that the plant planet is get, get, getting warmer. Even George Bush accepts that, so, so I won't spend time convincing you of that. But I will show, show you this d data here, which shows that CO2 levels correlate very strongly with the temperature of the planet. And the data for hundreds of thousands of years shows that. We also know that, that the CO2 levels now are higher than they have ever been, and that it's anthropomorphic in origin. The scientific data is, is dead on proving that. It's just a proven fact. We know that we as humans are actually driving the CO, CO2 level increase on the planet. It takes the plant planet a long time to resequester re that CO2 on its own. So the world is different. The Arctic is melting. It will continue to melt. The Antarctic is me me melting as well. The planet will be different, and it will be different for millennia. So we have to change where we get our e energy from. And, and so there are sort of three di major strategies for generating car carbon-free energy. One is carbon sequestration, which, which, which was alluded to er, er, earlier today by Aaron. And it's going to contribute, but it doesn't have the capacity to solve the projected growth or, or our real needs. What about nuclear? Nuclear could do it, except we would have to bring a nuclear reactor online every other day for the next 50 years. And so if that's our choice, we better get busy because we're already behind. 
what, what, what about re renewables? And I only have 12 minutes, right? So I can't go through all of these calculations. But, but if you look at all of the re re renewables, you find that there's only one that really has enough ca capacity to meet our needs into the future, and that is solar. 100,000 terawatts of solar energy strikes the Earth. And 600 ter ter terawatts of, of that is very practical. So why aren't we using solar? Solar is expensive. It's two to three times more expensive than fo fossil fuels. And so what we really need is a breakthrough technology, something that brings down the price of solar and makes it competitive. And that's wh why I'm w w working on new ideas about how, how to make photovoltaics more efficient and more cheap. Shown in this slide is a traditional sort of si silicon so, so solar cell in, in, in which you dope the material to make the energy levels a little, little bit different. The one called CB is the high energy, the, the one called VB is the, the low energy, and when, a, when, when light strikes it, an electron absorbs the, the, the energy, and then it can move along the CB and be extracted and ge ge generate electricity. This is called a PN jun junction. You can do the same thing with plastics, with con con conjugated polymer materials. But w w what, you, what you have to do is you have to take two materials that are immiscible. So, so it's like oil and w water. And, 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 and so when you stir them up and you mix them, they, they actually phase se segregate into nanoscale domains. So that when light strikes it, say light gets absorbed in the pink region, creates an excited e electron and leave it, leaves its vacancy below, that electron can move to the gray region. And then they can each extract, or, and then it can be extracted and uh, per per perform energy, or per generate electricity. These materials, cells have been built based on this. The problem is the efficiencies are still low, 8 to 10 percent, and they have a variety of other issues. We have an idea for how, in, how to make these materials better. That's shown, sh shown on the right here with these little blue and red dumbbells. So each of the little blue and red balls represents a semiconductor na nanocrystal whose uh, characteristics, its energies, I can control by w w what, what I make it of and what size I make it out of. And then what we're doing is we're putting different organic molecules on the surface so, so that we can ma make them bind together and make them behave as su 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 surfactants so that they'll go to the phase boundary of the two, two regions. So if you look, right, all the red balls are in the brown region and all the blue balls are in the white region. So, so we've made these materials in, 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 in our labs. And I show a di diagram of that here. There's the red ball, the blue ball. If, if the electron gets excited on the red one, it wants to go to the blue, because electrons like to go downhill. If an electron gets uh, excited on the blue one, it, it's stuck, but its vacancy can move. Its vacancy, which is called a hole, can actually float up. And, and, and so you can get charge s separation. But there are some clear issues here as well, because if the electron is in the CB of the blue and, and there, there's, a, there's a vacancy in the VB of the red, they can recombine. So one of the things we've been doing is learning how to turn off that recombination pr pr process. Uh, also, you need to control the energy levels very finely. And so that's, that's uh, n n uh, another topic we've been focusing on. But first, let's talk about the recombination. What we did was we took these balls and we coated one with positively charged organic molecules, one with negatively charged orga organic molecules, and even your elementary school children and grandchildren know that those guys are going to stick together. And in fact, they do, and we prove, prove that. And if we have the negative charge on the red balls and the positive on the blue, the, and we excite it, the electron jumps to, to, to the blue ball. If we keep the nanocrystal identical, we don't change its properties, but we swap the organic ligands. We, slot, we swap plus and, and, and minus, the electron transfer gets sh shut off. So we can use this internal electrostatic field to create a bias that, 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 that actually jar, drives the charge separation and inhibits the charge recombination. 
And, and so now we're actually learning how to take, take this design motif and put this into cells th themselves. Uh, an, another thing that we've managed to show in our lab is that if uh, we take a material and uh, we, uh, we attach it to, to a surface, that the lower energy level, the VB level, stays fixed. And the, high, and, and the high, higher energy level, the C, CB B, B level, changes, and it changes with the size of the particle. So what we can do is take a material and change the size and actually create an energy gradient that, that the electron can fall down to escape fr fr from its hole. We've also shown that different materials pin or fix the v, VB level at different energies. And we've shown how to actually use that by pu pu putting it in, into a photovoltaic cell. My uh, student knows that I like things simple, happy faces and sad faces, right? The one with all happy faces has a good energy level alignment. The one with sad, 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 sad faces has, has a poor energy level alignment. And, and the, the one with the fa favorable energy alignment has a, is, generates 70 times more power than the one with the poor energy level alignment. And, and, and so now we're, we're learning how to, how to actually t t take these things and inject the electrons in, 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 into the polymer materials. And so I guess I managed to finish on time by talking fast. I'd like to thank my students. I would like to thank my collaborators. I would like to thank the Department of Energy, which actually funds this research. And I'd like to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you.